Sport tonight, we're on location at Dunedin's Chinese Gardens with still co-coach Janine Southby as she reports on the weekend's pre-season warm-up tournament in Tauranga. We, we were really keen to go into the weekend looking at processes and looking at on-court on connections and chance for the girls to be together because we've had Donna out obviously with her uh, third child and she's, she's just come back into the, into the frame and we've had a number of injuries that have just been niggling and so for us it was really just that crucial time on court against quality opposition and being so far removed from the rest of the country as far as being able to get easy access to other teams, it was really vital for us from that perspective. So yeah, we were disappointed with the results and us, especially the girls. However, there's some really positive things that came out of it and you know, the, for four of the five games we competed for two thirds of a game so there's, there was a quarter in each of our first four games that led us down and for the rest of those games we were up there and you know, really pushing and, and taking the lead and that's a real positive for us so now it's actually taking those three quarters and putting them into four. I think it's given us a clear view on how the players work with each other and what our strengths are and we've still got another pre-season uh, fixture in a couple of weeks in Balclutha which we'll be looking to really nail our starting line up at that and look at options if, God forbid, anything um, goes untoward and wry with our plans. So it's fair to say the new people to this level of netball found out what it takes to play this level of netball? Absolutely, and I think there's a lot of learning for a couple of them. And, you know, they've played NPC, they've been in, in national age group teams, but this is a huge step up for them. So, you know, we were quite pleased with the way they came through. There's, for them it's a consistency and being able to back it up and not just have those one-off performances. So, yeah, that's, that's certainly been a, le a key learning for some of the younger girls. Right, let's talk about you and your netball background. Uh, it's been many and varied. <laughs> it has. <laughs> you started in Dunedin as a Dunedin girl. I did. Uh, many years ago, I grew up in the country in Henley and played from the age of about eight. There was a, a competition in Moscow we used to go into every Saturday. Played age group netball through school and then went to university here and played for Otago. Uh, moved to Wellington. Played for Wellington and also played, that was back in the days of um, the club league, National Club League, so played for Wellington East there. Um, played um, New Zealand Young Internationals and there was a Milo series back then, which I guess sort of like a New Zealand Day team that I was in for a couple of years and then overseas for a little bit and came back and lived in Palmerston North and played for Western Flyers and then um, one or two and also then moved back to Dunedin so I've played for the Rebels in my last couple of years of playing which was like a homecoming I guess. You skipped Ohi. Skipped Ohi, oh I didn't play netball in Ohi, we used to just throw, play on the train tracks down there. <laughs> it's a good South and connection though. Yeah it is, it is and you know um, my mother played for South and Country back in her day and um, yeah I guess I feel real affinity to both South and Otago. So you still crossed the professional era, didn't you, just with the, with the flight? It's yeah. only just coming in. Isn't it? I was on the um, cusp of, pro of probably the start of it. We Back in the day, we used to get pay, pay, uh, sorry, player payments of $50 per game, mm -hmm. and we got a win bonus of $50. So that was a real, um, I guess, a real incentive for us. I bought a dinner set with my um, earnings for that year, so I've still got that dinner set. Mm -hmm. I look back to that and think, well, you know, that was the start of it all, but yeah. But old to, to play in the, in the new professional league. Mm -hmm. You would have made a huge amount of win bonuses with the Flyers. So oh you? no, we had a few. <laughs> we had a few. Yeah, we got them unawares. That's right. Yeah. But it was, uh, did you see it getting to what it is today in netball? Uh, not at that stage. I guess we we just out there and played and didn't really think too much about it. And then I, um, you know, stopped and had a family. And got, uh, you know, I'd been coaching all through all of that time as well, just at different levels. And really got into my coaching after that. And was lucky enough to have a year as assistant for Lois Muir in her last year of coaching with the Rebels and that was a you know a huge learning opportunity for me in that area and um, you know Lois has sort of always been in the background and I pull out some of her sayings every now and then. <laughs> you say it with the same intonations? <laughs> Not quite I don't know yeah Sounds, I, I feel like I'm turning into my mother and I think oh, am I turning into Lois? <laughs> Are you scaring players? <laughs> yeah. Oh Lois isn't scary she just yeah she um, get away and she 
there was something, I guess, something special about here, and there was lots of fun in the teams that we had with here. Mm. Yeah. Now, the serious nature of coaching, this is quite a different challenge, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of stake, you know, a lot at stake now, and you know, it's a business, and you've got to treat it as a business. And we're, you know, Natalie and I are working really hard to create a high performance environment, and we're really also keen to develop the pathways for the young players in our region. Um, you know, it's it's a tough market out there, and it's hard attracting people to the south of the country. And you know, realistically, we can't always com compete financially with with other provinces. So we're certainly looking at ways that we can create that environment where the players really want to be here. And, and I guess uh, look, looking back into the history of, of both the Sting and the Rebels, in that uh, you know, back in the 90s when they were such a force to be reckoned with, there was a lot of players attracted to coming here and the university was a big part of that. So that's something certainly for younger players that we're looking to attract to, to get the, the culture right and the development systems right underneath us. They used to battle out the final, didn't they? They did. A couple of times. Yeah, so. yeah they did. And you know, there's a real history there between the two. I suppose it's, that's something you do have to set aside because we're all one happy family now. Aren't we? we are. And I think, you know, it's there's obviously some teething that goes on with any merger and any um, joining. And, you know, I think the really real positive thing is, is that most of our group come from the South now. And we call it the South. We're not Otago and South, and we are the South. And uh, you're still physically, though, logistically, you are operating out of a couple of centres. Is that working well for you? Yeah, we have a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and we have a conference call every week from a management perspective. You know, we're training together um, twice, three times a week if, when we look at the weekends as well, and then the girls are in their regional base, either in Bacargill or Dunedin, get together um, up to five days a week as well. So we're, we're working really hard to replicate both... Um, in both centres. There's obviously some challenges in Invercargill around the stadium at this stage and that, that's creating a few headaches for Natalie in particular but you know we're hopeful we're through the worst of it now and, and that the velodrome's going to be on track for us shortly and the girls are really keen to get into it and they are really keen to just get into the competition. How do you see the division of labour with, with Natalie? Do you just have a list you do this, I do that, yeah, um, with a hard line I mean, we share a lot and we, you know, there's, there's certain areas that I'm taking responsibility for and certain that she is as well and lots of talking and, you know, it's getting scary because we do start finishing each other's sentences a little bit at times. She says you start them, so this is consistent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what about your style, your personal style for coaching? Uh, uh, how do you describe that? I think I, over the years it's evolved and it's still evolving. Um, I like to get to know the players. I mean, I'm really, I have a firm idea of what I want to create, but I'm also keen to understand where they're coming from too. And that's probably something that's changed in the way I've coached over the years. Uh, it, times have changed. And yeah, I think as a coach, you need to set, this, set the standard and, and maintain that standard. But, it, standard. but it's also, there's a, you know, we've got some really experienced players that we can draw their um, knowledge and that wealth of experience to help create a culture for the younger ones coming in. You feel the game is markedly different than the one you played? Absolutely. I don't know if I can physically stand up to it nowadays. I, I look at it and think, where's the skill gone? And I, yeah, that's, that is a concern because I do think it's, it is, there's a lot of bash out there, there's a lot of physicalness and sometimes it's a battle of attrition and that's not a good thing for the game from a skill perspective. Um, you know, I. I've played club netball here up until about two years ago and I have to say I had to stop because I was getting a bit frustrated with, mm. you know, at times a lack of school and people going for things they were never going to get. So I think from that perspective as a coach I really try and instill the skill basics in a player. And, you know, you can't say, look, we don't want you to, com you know, we, they have to be physical and they have to be able to compete but we'd like to see that skill winning up. You know, a bit of an old school, I guess, in that respect. But you make a good point, if they see it on TV, they'll do it at the club level, won't Absolutely, they? And, and that's that's a danger at, at the moment with the exposure the players get, and they don't always have the uh, strength and balance and coordination to be able to do it as well as what they can see the, the top players do it, and they don't bounce back as well from the knocks. Mm. Now you have another coaching role, don't you, on a national level? I do. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm with the New Zealand Under-21 team, so this is my third year with that programme and we're building towards the World Youth Cup next year in Glasgow so yeah it's a it's a part-time role and 
it's exciting because I get to see who's coming through from a talent perspective and manage to pinch a few <laughs> for the seal. So I guess there's a bit of an affinity, yeah, a bonus there. But it, it's challenging because we have players based right through the country, and the the management group again is based through the country. So again, there's a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, we we're in contact with the players a lot, but we're relying on regional providers to help really drive those programs and, and working with the regional coaches through the country to make sure that those young players are getting what they need to to, to be able to compete when we go to World Youth Cup next year. So you're co-coach of the Steel, uh, coach the under 21s, you've got numerous children running around. <laughs> yeah, I have. Um, do I need to ask the question what do you do in your spare time or am I wasting your time? Uh, no, <laughs> I do. I mean, I we go camping as a family um, that's something that we did as kids and absolutely loved it and I know our kids absolutely love it as well it's a special time over summer uh, just like the outdoors really we like to be quite active and, and keep active so yeah um, keeping fit's pretty high on my list of priorities spending some quality time with my husband <laughs> non netball time I guess and is he's, he a netball person? Uh, I don't think it's his favourite sport he's a badminton person so he's actually a Southender Okay. Went to South and Boys, and he's You're um, really winning some people up oh, here, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> I have some strong connections here. So here, he's um, he played South and Badminton for many years, and he's he's been manager of the New Zealand Badminton team for the last couple of years. And so yeah, he went to the Commonwealth Games a couple of years ago, and yeah. it's a bit of a highlight for him. And the kids showing a bit of talent there. It's uh, in the breeding yeah. there. Isn't we it? we don't like to. I guess you don't want to push them, and you want them to sort of go because they love being there. We sort of. The basics at the moment, swimming and gymnastics, and Grace is getting into netball, but yeah, mm. they love biking, and we're about to get a new puppy, so they're pretty excited about that. That's a good move, that's yeah. a good move. <laughs> uh, just looking uh, ahead, uh, do, do you see uh, you know, coaching going down that avenue, continuing down that avenue? Yeah, I, I mean, I've got a great opportunity, because I'm, I'm part of a, a national coaching development program at the moment, and that's giving me the opportunity to work in coaching full-time. And yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those sports are uh, up and down industry, as we well know. And I, I'd like to think that there's a long term future in coaching, but I'm realistic to know that you know you can be a hero one day and a villain the next. So you've got to keep options open, I guess. Because you will ultimately be judging on the court, aren't you? You are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to finish off with, I need one thing about you that the team may not know. Yeah. They don't know that I'm a real dab hand at cooking. I I like to think of myself as Nigella in the kitchen. Does anyone actually agree with that? Some of my friends do. 